It's a fucking adorable hat. <laughs> it's too bad I couldn't make the... Even really close up, it's hard to tell that there's sun, like, trying to figure out what a light bulb is. <laughs> is that what's going on? I thought he was holding an iPhone. <laughs> exactly. That, that's the problem. <laughs> He looks like he's taking a picture, like he's an old man taking a picture with an iPhone. <laughs> he's holding it right up to his face. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to have visual confirmation that we're live and a stream's happening. Oh, we're got an ad going. Live. Yeah, the stream is happening, and we're projecting. Well, it's this telling audio, me. I don't care. <laughs> it's telling me to support the stream, and I'm part of the stream. I have to. It's 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 my job. Well, it's not my job. We don't get paid. Yeah, it's we my don't job. Get paid for this. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, I sent the blast so Cool. Cool. Can we make this a part of our stream just while this is going, we just banned? <laughs> Can they hear us right now? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> let's let's just show let's just be here. No, I don't it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I will, I will be 100% transparent though, when I watch streams and this shit happens, it is my favorite part. Yeah, it's the best, it's the best part. I just, I really felt like talking about it because you were talking about the thumbnail and I wanted to be there for that. <laughs> I was going to stay muted, but I just decided, no, fuck it. Um, this is happening this time. Alright, coming back well, in 5, yeah, welcome. 4, 3, 2, Hey, well, why are you counting down? It doesn't well, even I don't know why I was counting down. To continue I, the bit, I guess. <laughs> yep. I'm flabbergasted. You, you really bamboozled me on this one. <laughs> uh, you didn't even give me time to get my stream face on. <laughs> oh. I'm Ooh, sorry. You know? I'm sorry, Gabe. Well, we could we could go back to that if you wanna if you wanna put a face on real quick with yeah. some yeah, thumbnail sure. up, but uh. Yeah, sure. But put, put the title card back. Up. Okay, okay, oh, we're back. We're back to title card. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, coming back okay. in three, two, mm -hmm. one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so see, yeah, alternatively, we, we could also go back to the title card if you want to riff off stuff in the title card, because I do put stuff in there that isn't always visible at the thumbnail scale. We yeah, that's true. You were saying? Yeah, I mean, change that. So throw it up again. <laughs> throw it up. Again. Bring us back. Bring us back. Okay, we're going back. We're back at the opening All right. now. Oh, um, that. So it's a nice Dutch angle. It's, uh, yeah, it looks like a diamond. Well, I'm noticing. Sport. Is that a dwarven rune in the back that you decided to put in there as signage? <laughs> it's it's fake letters. Okay. They're translatable into anything. Okay. Is that is that a cash register or a popcorn machine? Good question. <laughs> okay, well, I okay. want some. Have you seen a popcorn machine? No. They're a little bit bigger. <laughs> a little bit. All right, coming back in three, two, two. one. Ah! No, see, oh, I'm hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> wow, wow. wow. man, started. look at all you. Look at that. God, you're beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I needed that. Not you. Oh. Ew. Yeah, oh. not you, Ken. Well, fine. I didn't want your audience. approval anyway. That's good. It's okay, oh, Ken. It, I think it's it's because your hair is still in the awkward stage. It'll pass, and then they'll love you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll turn you into a marketable plush yet. Oh, man. I would love to be a marketable plush. <laughs> There's at least one YouTuber I watch who has done that, and it's like... I... That's so fucking iconic. Yeah. Just see. Well, well dude, especially because it's not like this person's like a childish. I shouldn't say childish. That's the wrong word. Like approachable, child friendly, like cheery content type. Yeah. Like this is someone who occasionally like will go into deeper, like darker dives about someone. So it's just really weird that this YouTuber has just like a plushie of themselves. Is it like I'm sale? down? Yeah. I huh. yeah I honestly first ever merch that we are ever going to create is going to be me as a plushie and it's going to be totally soft and 100% huggable and I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> and yeah, it's going to be all that except for the scruff is like made of Velcro to really really get that. Uh, no, that who the hell in. would want that? I don't <laughs> want that. 
It's See, we the, can't it would be the Ken experience. It would Do you be often the... feel Ken's beard and think, <laughs> ah, yes, Velcro? <laughs> yeah. All the time? I mean, yeah. you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> I won't say that you're wrong. The trouble is, when you're selling a plush, you want plush. <laughs> not Velcro face? Yeah, not Velcro face. <laughs> that was my favorite webkin. I don't like where this is going. Velcro face? Is that like... <laughs> don't you hate it when your boyfriend's talking too much? You just grab the other side of his face and... Zzzz, and now he can't. <laughs> you know? Yep. Velcro together. I, I can't wait for I the next... I know there's a train of thought, but I lost it like six stations ago and I've been like desperately scrambling going, wait, wait, please, but I think it's just gone and I've lost it. I can't wait for the next horror movie where Velcro face is the villain. He's, you know, so iconic. <laughs> Are you trying to slam dunk the entire genre of horror? <laughs> <laughs> Just like a horror movie as a concept? Yeah. <laughs> and he pops face. out of a pile so... of craft supplies and all the little pom-poms are stuck to his face. He's just... <laughs> Imagine how horrifying you could make that movie. Some You're in a dark room, and someone's yeah. terrified the murderers are going to get them, and then just hear... <laughs> <laughs> of someone ripping off Velcro <laughs> off of their face because they got it stuck while they were in the closet. <laughs> like, but, then it, but then it just turns out that the, the person next to them was Velcroing up their light-up shoes. Oh, Yeah! <laughs> Man, think of the merchandising great. opportunities on Velcro, Velcro Face. You could like swap out the parts from different parts of the movie, <gasps> you know? Oh, well, yeah, like in that iconic part where he ripped off someone's hand and then stuck it to his face, and he was like, I'm that guy from My Hero Academia. And then everybody was like, wait, my hand isn't even Velcro compatible. And they're like, that's part of his mystic powers. <laughs> his mystic but anything will stick to Velcro. So it's like he gets his hand back and reattaches it, but he can't put his shoes back on because his hand keeps getting stuck. It's like that I like scene. that nobody is like talking about the idea of selling toys to children of a horror movie slasher icon as being strange because that's actually just the timeline that we were in. Not now, like it's a wow 2020s crazy thing. Like decades ago, we were oh, yeah. already on that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Make Robocop into a cartoon, a Saturday morning cartoon. Man, that kicks ass, though. Like, Robocop <laughs> kicks ass, though. Like, man. He's a robot. He's he, a cop. He's a robot. He's a cop. What else can you ask for? I, I just really want that Judge Dredd cereal box. I, it's just crazy that a movie that's about, like, cop hyper authoritarian propaganda shit is literally turned into a saturday morning cartoon like it just it seems like something that someone wrote and not actually now, how wait. reality goes now are we talking about a literal robocop cartoon that was in like the 90s or are you making a subtle dig at paw patrol no like you know so there is a gritty movie called robocop which mm -hmm. is hardcore and there's blood and guts and gore and it's not for children and it's rated r I mean, he it's shoots a, a rapist in like, the dick. Yeah, like, and in addition to all that blam, like, underneath, the same way that Starship Troopers is really like, poo, pee, pop, but it's also about authoritarianism and propaganda. Like, this one's very much, Lost. like, on how you sell police to the people that are going to be policed. Criminals. And, like, there's all these plot lines and, like, the dude's identity being erased as he turns into the robot. And then they genuinely made a Saturday morning cartoon like, drawn in the 90s that was RoboCop going around and talking about environmentalism and shit. No word of a lie that is the truth. Hmm. Damn. Because he's RoboCop, and RoboCop is cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, who do you exactly. think would win a fight between the RoboCop and the Terminator? We should probably... Which Terminator? <laughs> yeah, I think the Terminator's got this in the bag. <laughs> like, a T-1000, I think, would be able to beat RoboCop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We can't we can't keep going down this rabbit hole. It's too alluring. Do you think Iron Man could beat the Terminator? No, stop. Do you think Iron Man is John Connor? <laughs> Joe. Hey, One real day talk, I did not like Terminator 2. It's alright. 
<laughs> but it, ex it, it expands so well in what the previous one had established, but also has flaws in terms of the continuity, which they, as the sequels get worse, they end up trying to fix the continuity, but make the continuity worse and attempting to do it. And did you guys see that, like, random one that had uh, Emilia Clark? That's it. It was like Genesis or something. I was working at a movie theater when it came out, and it was just like... No one gave a shit at, about it. <laughs> yeah. When you're working at a movie theater, you get snippets. Because yep. you go and you walk and you do a theater check, you know, and it takes like two minutes tops. But you get like two minutes of random bit of movie. And every time I went in, it was just like... I know that's Terminator. I wonder who likes Terminator. Oh, well. And I left. Like, I loved the first two movies, but just... Wait, you didn't like the third one? Third one's my favorite. <laughs> I'm gonna be to total... Totally honestly, the only reason I didn't like T2 was because the kid was just so goddamn annoying. That's fair. Every time he's on screen, it's like, God! That's fair. Mm -hmm. You little dingus. I don't remember anything from the Terminator movies. I don't know which Terminator movie I have seen. I only remember snippets. So of a the Terminator first movie. the first Terminator movie is Sarah Connor versus Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. And is Arnold Schwarzenegger in all of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then yeah, I have no idea. Uh, but it's like it's the, just him. Like he yeah, is the, the only key, one <laughs> in the first the one. The key aspect for the first one is that Arnold Schwarzenegger is a bad guy sent back in time by Skynet who makes people made Skynet, which made robots, and now it's AI and it dominates the world in the future. So all of the Terminator movies are time travel bullshit against Skynet. This one is genuinely just Arnold Schwarzenegger bad, Sarah Connor good, they fight. Yeah. And then the hey, second have, one oof. is you know, liquid cop man chasing down oh. john connor kid and the reason yeah. why t2 is so respected is because liquid cop man is some good visual effects for the time mm -hmm. oh yeah <laughs> and in this one liquid cop man is a more advanced terminator and arch arnold schwarzenegger comes back as like a reprogrammed or rogue terminator to protect sarah connor Okay, if I, remember I correctly. think I've seen both of them and remember nothing. Yeah, well, which is have how you ever thought about it. how if you're designing a robot to go in and kill people, it's important for it to be, like, disguised as a person. But, like, to be discreet, you don't want it to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. The dude is fucking jacked and buff as hell. I submit that the original purpose behind the Terminators was sex dolls, sex robots. That's why they have such lifelike appearances, and that's why they're all just beefy as hell. I, I think we've reached the end of the conversation. I'll, I'll finish think, that off with a, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we, we were digging and digging, and then there was a clink, and it's like, oh, that's sex robots. Okay, that's it, boys. <laughs> <sighs> So one day passed. Because he told the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. You can't keep telling the truth at me and expect me to just be like not adding. Like I, I can't not add. You tempt me so greatly. <laughs> one day passed when you were hired. Another when you tailed the loo. Eh. Another when you tailed the. Tailed the loo. <laughs> You fucked me up on this. You fucked me. <laughs> One day passed when you were hired, another when you tailed the Lord. Three days were spent fighting the... Sorry, day three was... I can't even read my own handwriting. Day three was spent fighting, fighting the Chroma Core. Day four was spent fighting, finding the Spire. You've been given a week to grab the packages from Newtown, a day's sail away. A scene of carnage met you at the Spire. Ships emptied of supplies. Bodies strewn about above and below. A corpse with coordinates sent you to save them. A series of numbers, ascending, a key, a steel wreck in a cavern. All to say, you still have time and the caves go deeper. Back on the bloodline.
<laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. So we got a lot of time so. to explore this still, or we still have like a day to explore this before we have to go and pick up the package. Like uh, it's a good question. So just to go over the bit that I stumbled over six times in a row again. Uh, so you spent one day basically uh, when you were hired, like getting hired and doing the interview. Uh, another one was spent like tailing the Lord, following him. Another one was when you were waiting for Senator Franklin and you fought the Chroma Corps. You had basically a fourth day spent when you were sailing out here to the Spire. You got to the spire basically at dusk, and then from dawn to noon, you were exploring. So now we're starting basically as you've gone back upstairs, you've explained what you've found to your companions, you've had some lunch, and you were given seven days, so basically kind of you can check out the map and see how you feel about it. So on the map, we would need to go uh, up a sector, and we're there. Mm. Oh, none of the cameras are working. Shit. <laughs> oh, well. The cameras are black. Oh, well, it's fine. We'll just go back. Yeah, it would only be, like, one one day trip, real quick. Like, half day, probably. Okay, I have stolen my speaky toy. I've obtained dice. I'm ready. You've, you've stolen the squonk? We've stolen the no squonk. squonking for this bean. I don't think she's going to be happy. She's not. She's really not. But Maya's always happy. It's true. Well, so sometimes she gets extra happy in, like, a bad way. We call it the snorfing. Oh, the snorfing begins at some point? Yeah. The snorfing. <laughs> and the whorfing. The whorfing and the snorfing. Yeah. It's very much the attitude of, like, ha 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 ha, this is a fight where I bite hard, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. So, you've had a little bit of lunch. How's it going? Should we continue to explore? Well, I don't see why not. I mean, there's a possibility that people can survive down there if they have supplies. <clears throat> but, uh, I think if we go in careful, we should be able to able to get out okay. Who has who has what artifacts from your delve inside? I have the tablet. I have the ship. The ship in a bottle. I don't think I actually grabbed anything. No, oh, someone must Yep. Yeah. There was the key. You probably have the key. I got the key. You got the key? I feel like I picked up the key. Man, I took it from you. Okay. You took it from me. I have the ship in a bottle. So you got you got, you got all those things. You've kind of held on to them. The people who, uh, like Rooker and Kennedy and Bilgey, who are all up top, they're kind of looking at them quizzically, having just seen them, getting the answers as to where you picked them up, kind of going, huh. Ken and Yi seems in particular confused by this little ship in a bottle, both by the nature of it being in a bottle, as well as just... Eh? <laughs> like, why would you put a ship in a bottle? <laughs> well, I mean, I've seen it done before. It's a sort of like a feed of craftsmanship and delicacy, but the ship itself don't make no sense. Hey, why not spend the Delicacy and craft on a dope ash fucking ship. I don't know. Well, that's sort of like a cost thing, and you know, it's just, it's just them showing off. I think we should continue to explore. That's my boat. All right, then. I think there something has, something is op going to open for this key. A feat of craftsmanship, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't count if you can take the bottle apart. My headphones back up. I also had instructions. Ooh, ooh, look at that! <laughs> I do love that model, though. So good. Love the detail on it, including the wax on the cork. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Uh, there we go. So Tiana isn't super stoked to go to 
to go back down. She seems kind of just like, nah, that's about as much of cave as I can handle. Nope, fair enough. Mm. Mm. Uh, Crocodile's also reluctant to go back down because she doesn't want to be separated from Warbles again. Um, well, that's fair. She d like she does have another idea though. She says like, you know, I could try and take over for one of the fish and see if there's another entryway or anything down below. Sure. Mm, some recon. I think that's a good idea. And so okay, probably try that at some point. Sure. <laughs> Uh, is anyone able to decipher this text? Anyone familiar with old languages? Um, they all kind of uh, pass it to each other. Bilgi kind of gives it a squint and kind of goes, and then passes it along. Okay, well, let's continue on our way. Yeah. I would like to, well, first of all, <laughs> I would like to continue, but we don't have to continue. Is there anybody else willing to continue searching? Like if Tiana stays back on the ship? Yeah, I mean, I want to keep going. I want to explore a little more. I'm curious. I just want to go in well equipped. Uh, what about like Dilji and Rucker? How are they feeling? Rucker and Bilgy kind of just awkwardly shuffle back and forth. It seems like their kind of attitude is just like, we don't need four people in a cave. More so than like, oh, we should go. Okay. Well, me and uh, Sun could go, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I want to go with at least one other person. Um, would be nice to have some magic in case things go uh, go sideways. With that crocodile's just kind of like, uh... no, you don't, you don't. I mean, you don't have to. I'm just, just saying. It'd be nice if you know there's some sort of magical burst. I don't know much about magic. Clearly, fine. I'll go. Let me just do a quick check to see if there's any. Anything going on underwater? Sure, sure. By the time you finished your sentence, you can see already, like, Bilgy goes for a swab for the decks, like, Rooker starts clattering some pots and pans and moving towards the water to start cleaning them out. Like, Tiana wanders over towards the ship and just is obviously just pretending to hold some rope. <laughs> nice. All right, wanna, wanna give me a roll? All right, I'm going to try and do what I do with Crowquill or with Warbles and just kind of like see through a fish's eyes, I guess, and see if I can see anything underwater. Uh, it's all right. Uh, that's a 12, that is a 15, and that is a 19. All right, so you you kind of put your feelers out. You find a particularly dumb fish that you can kind of snap into to try and get a better bit of sense data. Immediately, you get a little bit of light, but then it's kind of like an ah, shit, because you have fish vision, and fish vision ain't shit. You start kind of feeling into a little bit of memory, and you start to get a bit of like sort of like the sound organs, and you get a layout. From what you can tell, the fish isn't really listening to you because you're trying to more feel than anything. It's like around here underneath the boats, like there's more spikes, but it just kind of goes down. You haven't found any entrances yet. Uh, very quickly, it goes from that waxy stuff to just rock, and the rock isn't as precarious. It's very evident that it's kind of just a slope. You do have enough steam left in you that you could probably jump into something else and do another roll. You see something larger swimming below. Yeah, I'll try it. I like big things. Hmm? That was not as good. 
<laughs> uh, oh, boy. Um, that is a 14. Mm -hmm. All right. You lurch downwards, and immediately you get a little bit of sickness. You switch from being a small fish to a big fish, and there's kind of a bit of perspective shift, and you get dizzy. You have to stabilize, but you think you're in a whale of some sort. An orca, maybe? It echolocates a little bit. It chitters, and you get the feeling that this is just kind of smoothness downwards. You don't get any additional kind of evidence of inlets or cave entrances or anything like that. Hmm. I'll back off then and just kind of... Well, it's waxy for a little ways down and then it just becomes regular rock. Regular spikes. Mm. Okay. Well, I didn't really fancy swimming down that way anyway. Well, I was more curious to see if we could sort of know what we're going into by going down there. Hmm? I mean, fair enough. I, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's Clearly built by somebody, and I just, I just wondering if people are living in there or not. That's my big concern. I have my doubts about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, haven't seen any any evidence either way. Uh, I am grabbing my tower shield mm -hmm. uh, that I have that you know I don't carry with me, obviously, but just. Mm -hmm. Just a little thing for some added protection before going back into the mine. All right, so you, you put your tower shield on, you sort of chuck it onto your back, and you sort of like, you bend a little bit. You make your way down that first rope to where there's like the up and down, and then immediately you're like two steps up to the up, and you kind of clunk against the back, and yeah, this isn't going to make it over any kind of edge here. Oh dang. Well, it's worth a shot. And I'll just put it down uh, to pick up on our way back. Yeah. You put it somewhere that you're inevitably going to bump into it if you don't remember it or see it. Right, okay. at, right at toe height. So you can just <laughs> exactly at toe height. it into your height. <laughs> All right. You know, so you could just be walking and be like, Fucking good thing I remember that tower shield. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's, go, um, let's go search out that, that area with the, the rooms and the mm -hmm. downwards ladder. Before we descend, I'm giving an entire spiel to Warbles being like, now be a good bird. Don't eat the corpses. I know they may look delicious, <laughs> but don't eat them. You don't know where <laughs> they've been. <laughs> Just go back to the ship and wait for me to call you. And try not to bug anyone, okay? <laughs> Warbles is very much bird mode and is not entertaining the idea that he's being spoken to. There's definitely at least one eye that was eaten in your absence. Uh, he'll be fine. It's good for his beak. <laughs> You're not the one that has to clean that beak. <laughs> or the feathers. All right. I thought he did that himself. I thought he was a pretty pretty clean sort. I help out. <laughs> hmm. Realistically, Warbles is totally capable of cleaning himself, but Crowquill is just mom mode. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, okay. Warbles right. kind of flutters back up out the entrance, and then you guys clamber through the narrow up bit, about 10 feet. You sort of almost like hopping a fence, go to the other side and go down 20. You make your way down to where it's solid. There's like a bend, you have to go underneath something. And then you hit the clunk of the steel floor and you're back to where there was the series of rooms. You checked six of 18, so that's three on each side and then it would be nine total. So there's six rooms on each side on the far end that you haven't checked yet. Well, let's get checking. Yeah. By which I mean, <laughs> you guys get checking, because I can't see bad stuff. <laughs> you can see good stuff? I can only see good stuff. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll start checking the rooms. 
I'll give Sun one side. I'll do the other side. Sounds good. I'm like SWAT team style every time I open a door with my gun. Like, ah! All right. So, Crowquill, you're in the middle just kind of lazily with the de-speared haft kind of tapping along, making sure you're not on either side of the hallway. Just kind of... Did, mm -hmm. As on either side, there's Jane and uh, Sun just kind of like, crank, crank, crank. Pshh. No one. We're good. Crank, crank, crank. Pshh. Over and over. You get most of the way through. It's door 15 where you crack it open. And at first... That's You're like, oh. <laughs> you see something, you pause. There's a really hesitant clear, yep. And you see what looks like a body, uh, disheveled looking, kind of like tatters and rags in one of the beds. You see what looks like a lantern next to it. There's a crossbow, not as nice as yours, Jane, uh, just kind of like sitting slumped against the side of the bed. How long does the body look like it's been here for? Like, is it really decomposed or? A few days, maybe. It definitely was one of those things where like you cracked it and you started smelling it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, I mean, I'll search him, uh, see if he has anything on him. You look through, uh, you find just kind of like a bit of loose change, like a shitty mug. Very quickly, like it's one of those things where you leaf through the like the first pocket and second and go, nothing worth taking here is worth going through more of these pockets. Mm -hmm. It's like grimy, really worn down material. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave them, close the door again. Wait, 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 does he... I'm just popping my head over, take a quick look. Does mm -hmm. he look like any sort of animals have gotten to him? Nothing. I mean, like, like hmm. genuinely nothing, nothing. You see an almost flawlessly intact body, no, like, weapon wound, no blood, anything. Hmm. Do we know... Well, all right, then. Do we know how this person died... I have no doctoring skills to figure that out. You just have these big vaulty doors, and then there was a lantern next to the guy. Okay. Does the is the lantern like burnt out? It looks like it's gone through a decent bit of its oil, but there's still some left. It isn't lit though; like it's extinguished. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, yeah, let's close it up and keep that in mind. Yeah? So you get through the rest of them bit by bit. At the end, there's a curtain, and you know it leads further into what you presume is a ship. No wait till Gabe's here for it. For the big reveal. <laughs> that this was... All just the Royal Caribbean cruise ship the entire time. <laughs> what is he doing? What? <laughs> Maya's barking because she wants something, but we don't know what it is that she wants. <laughs> is basically the situation. Is it attention or the squeaker toy? No, I think it's her Kong, but I have no idea where her Kong went. So. Okay. Why is my hair doing this? Why? Have you ever okay, done so hair? Yes, Lantern I hear is... Not stuff. recently. Burnt out. Sorry, continue. So you've cracked the rest of the doors in the hallway, the rest of them are empty, and there's just this curtain that leads further into the boat. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Okay, on three. On. Two. Three! And you, woof, and you're in position, and it's just... Okay, there's no one here. You're still kind of off kilter the way you were the rest of the way in. And here it's almost like you go from steel and on the other side it moves to like wood. And you can see there's a set of double doors that aren't like these other ones. They're just kind of like loose, almost like tavern-like. There's a counter. It looks like there's some pamphlets that due to the angle have kind of fallen over some of them. I grab one. What do the pamphlets say? 
Gibberish, as far as you know. Do you know Elvish or Dwarvish? No way in hell I know either of those. No. Do you know Elvish or Dwarvish? You might know no. Dwarvish. I have Dwarven lore, but that's not like a language thing as much as it's just I've worked with Dwarven Jack before. Like, mm -hmm. best I would recognize a rune or two, but no, I mean, I ain't proficient in it. Okay. You just see one of these has a picture of like a sailboat, it looks like. The other one has a picture of. Looks like the same ship in a bottle you saw beforehand. Hmm. Okay. There's a little bell on the counter. Looks like maybe a weird cash box of some sort. There's a little, like, there's a door behind, there's a door to the side, and then the double door's out. I'm going to pocket a pamphlet. Just <laughs> for later. <You> just... <laughs> um, uh, well... If no one's around here, might as well uh, not let this gold go to waste. I'm going to try and open the cash box. What sort of locking mechanism does it have? All right, you give it a once over. You see a lock and you start to kind of get a look at it, but it's so broken that you're not even sure a key would work. Right as you're sort of trying to get like a bit of a rattle to see if you can hear a mechanism, your fingers slip and it just kind of goes like, against the counter, and it just <clears throat> and opens. Hmm. Is there anything in it? It's... At first you think it's silver, but quickly you... Uh, all three of you, for different reasons, would recognize that this definitely isn't silver coin. This is some kind of softer metal, like nickel. None of them are something that people would accept at a market. Hmm. That is weird. Strange. <laughs> is it even like enough metal to be worth taking as like crafting materials? For you, yeah. As a gunsmith, you could use this. You think it might be nickel, which would be good? Okay. I was um, going to say, I could take uh, some and then try and like pawn it off by being like, sure. ooh, how many uh, coins coppers... from a far off land? <laughs> coppers worth of, uh, of, of nickel? Uh, I'll say that you have one silver's worth of nickel. In terms sure. of actual, like, out of game, we know what this is worth. You basically take, like, $30 of loose change and just shove it all in a bag. Mm. Nice. Well. So there's the double good. doors out. There was the door behind the counter and the door to the side. Door oh. behind the counter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You move forward and crack it. Immediately you stop because your instincts kind of kick in. You look down, you see a little bit of what looks like maybe a broken trip wire. As you crack the door a little further, you feel kind of a pressure. You look down and you see a little scrap of red coat from the light you can see behind you. Oh. The room is really dark. I will witch light. Alright, you fizzle your witch light together with some opposing as elements. They annihilate, and there's a burst of light that starts oh. to like remain s consistent. You kind of angle it around the door a little, and you get a better look at things. Whatever's tr whatever trap is there, you're able to push further and further till you can get through. And then as you all breach, once you're on the other side of the door, the light illuminates the rest of the room. It looks like this is, or it was, a particularly stately room, better than the other ones. There's, like, an actual space for proper cooking, like an actual fridge. There's, like, a desk, it looks like, with an old dwarven terminal. The dwarven terminal has been smashed beyond any possible repair. The walls, yeah. however, like the worst of the two ships above, are just covered in, like... Notes, scribbles, drawings, things that are like mapped out over several pieces of paper next to each other, all kinds of stuff. Hmm. I look at this. Can I get any information from trying to look at these notes? Yeah. Uh, I'll have you kind of start to wander over. I presume that immediately Sun's going to go tripwire, and you look and you see like there's a rigged shotgun trap of some sort that was 
pointed towards the door that's gone off. Hmm. Well, this is Was because there... we missed Fallout this week, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing this because we missed Fallout this week. <laughs> <laughs> you said there was like a piece of coat. Was there like a body behind that door? Yep. Uh, you can get a good look at the body, and it looks like it's another red coat person. Were they shot by the shotgun trap? Yep. I want to look well, through gonna... their pockets for any sort of notation or notes, just any reason why they would be there, why they're invest. Well, we know they're investigating for uh, crystals and stuff like that, but like. Literally anything. Anything on them. <laughs> this one's genuinely got nothing of value, like, information-wise. You do find, uh, like, a silver bracelet and a silver ring. Hmm. Um, what kind of condition is that shotgun in? It's in the kind of condition where if you were anyone else, you might go, I could use this, but because you're you, you go, oh, good, parts. Yeah, I'm, I'm grabbing that shotgun for parts. Like, it's in well service. Possibly. It's in serviceable condition. Like, you wouldn't use it over your own as long as your own is working. Uh, right. But uh, you have one just like blunderbuss worth of parts, basically. Cool. Um, I am going to be taking that ring and bracelet. Right, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was about to say, but I can't <laughs> find a pencil. No, you can take them if you want. It's fine for you to take them. I don't really well, care. Both, yeah. You're both kneeling over this body, holding a dead person's hand, going, no, no, no. You, okay, uh, you know, okay, hold on. Hold it for a second. And you, you Okay, I got it. Pull the ring off. You go, okay. It's not like I have such need for such finery. I'm fine with what I have. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, I mean, you, you guys know we got jobs now, right? Like... <laughs> We don't need to be. We don't need to be fighting over over dead man's trinkets. And we're not. Um, we're negotiating. Is, is there anything <laughs> using dwarven lore? Is there anything salvageable from this terminal, like in terms of parts? In terms of parts, yes, you're able to get like loose gears, uh, like scrap metal that you would have to kind of get Kennedy to hammer out into shape, and a few just kind of like bits and bobs. No crystals though. This one specifically has already had its crystal yanked out. No crystal. You mm. Nothing. You find five uh, coppers yeah. worth of dwarven, uh, like, tech crafting components. The only thing left in this room is a hole that goes downwards. You can see that there's, like, climbing stuff that's, like, basically been set up, but the rope looks slack. Hmm... Okay. I'm gonna shine a light and I shine a torch down in there. Is this like down into another room or is this like a tunnel down to who knows where? So you're kind of shining your light down, kind of going, hmm. At this point, uh, like, uh, Crowquill, you're going back and forth, you're hearing, you're listening, keeping watch. Uh, and Jane, you're looking and you're picking up these paces. You these pieces of paper, you're getting notes together. And you find a bunch of them that are like, fiddly bastard wouldn't give me his key. Doesn't matter, I've got the rest. We just need his. I'm sure I can get it out of him. At this point, son, you're looking down and you see that there's someone who's wedged, like, head down. It's dark, you can't really see, but you can see, like, one boot coming up towards you. Hmm. Oh, I'm gonna call down. Hello? No response. Well, he's probably dead. Pull the rope up? Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm heaving on the rope to try and pull this guy out. Stuck. Stuck. I heave hard. What's he stuck in? Is it earth? Rock. Just wedged head down. Could I, I try heave. and clear that up a little bit? <laughs> All right, so you guys are talking, you're switching over. Uh, just move to the next page as you're looking through these notes, and you think you found it where it's like, got a wedge down there. I figure I have the leverage. He still said it slipped down his pocket. Liar. Finney's always been a liar. I can get him to talk. You move it to the side. 
as you're doing this, like uh, you're feeling out the ground. You've got enough that with elemental magic, you can push it. Uh, Sun, you're taking a look. There's one boot that matches a boot you saw earlier and no matching boot here down in this hole. Hmm. Hold off his boot and threw him down, eh? No foot either. Hmm. Is there a key in the boot? <laughs> Is this person one like has only one leg? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well. So this person must have been the person that was living in the other ship, I guess. Yeah. Can you give me an elemental roll? Okay. Maybe he was even the person that made all those notes. Which did these look notes look similar to the notes that we saw in the other ship? Yep. Okay. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. So you lean down. You know this is a cave, so you're trying to just be careful if ineffective. You're kind of crumbling some of this gently into sand, and after a little while, there's a give and a slip, and then a give and then a hump, and this thing goes down somewhere that the torchlight doesn't reach, and the rope goes taut again. Whoever this is is hanging down there. Mm. Can we pull them up? I'm working on it. You go to try, and then it's one of those things where it's just kind of like against the cave wall, and it's like, nope. <sighs> you can definitely see the glint of a key by your estimate, like 50 meters down. Ooh, that's a long way to go for a key. Not gonna be me going down there to get it, that's for sure. I'll do it. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, it's pretty far down. I want to blame anybody for getting scared of that sort of height. I'll go. Yeah, I'm no. you. well, maybe it's best if we just keep moving on, you know. I, I get everyone's kind of scared of this hole, so. I have five units of rope. Do you need? <laughs> I have ten units of rope. So 15 um, meters? Can we connect the rope to the rope that's already there? You'd have to be down there to make the cut. Hmm. Um, I take my gun and I'm aiming it at the lowest part of the rope I can. Trying to can sever shoot it. it. Yeah, and then I can haul up at least that much more rope. I guess so, yeah. But then whatever's hanging is going to drop along with the key, right? Well, I thought the key was at the bottom of the pit. That we could see as he's like... Yeah, it's, oh, okay. it's like way, way down there. So oh. you're... Both of you are looking uh -oh, down. Oh, spooky! I've been booted from the call. It's always so scary because it's like everything's perfectly normal. Like, I'm like, it's not just one. It's like it goes toggle, toggle, toggle. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, it's so spooky. Everyone is still technically in the uh, shot, though, even though it's only like Will's uh, arm. Uh, <laughs> It's, a it's not even the right side. There we go. There we go. go. Middle of the street. There we go. I'm back. Okay. So you're both looking there. You're, you've got your shotgun sort of pointed down there. Wait, how much you're, rope does that look like? Like, how much rope is currently there? So, sun's leaning over, sort of aiming for the shot. You're leaning over, kind of looking to get an estimate. And both of you kind of lurch, hit each other, kind of shove. Son, you kind of like clamber onto the ground nearby and you scramble back. Uh, what's I going to say? Uh, Jane, you kind of like slip and your foot goes the full way in. You stop and you, with like the other knee and leg and both hands, you get your way out of the hole. Whoa. Well, you can try not to do that again. 
You Did didn't I even see fall what in? happened. Girl, or, girl. like, what just happened? <laughs> you feel alert? Almost. Like, both of you slipped, bumped into each other, and you were, like, full leg way in before you caught yourself and scrambled out. Hmm. Well, I still think that we should probably leave well enough alone. At least do we find out what that key's for. Yeah, okay, whatever. We'll come back. See if we need anything. If nothing else, we'll back go with... and grab some rope from the rigging. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got lots of rope. Okay, we'll leave it for now and come back. All right. You leave this room and go back into the lobby. There's the two double doors that go outside, and then the storage room closet looks like. Storage room closet? Mm. What's that? Probably full of dwarf tech, if I know. Yeah, it's a slightly narrower door. You open it, and sure enough, you look inside, and there's like a bucket, a mop. Mm. You look through and kind of like, yeah, nothing you need, and close it. Okay, double doors. Well, that's kind of disappointing. All right, you open the double doors, and at first you think it's a dead end because you just see rock. But then you look, and on either side, there's enough space for you to shimmy. I'll shimmy to the right. All right, you press yourself up, and you start to shimmy. You move step. You feel the rock. Step, step, and you think it's starting to open up. How are you illuminating things here? I'm getting um, Crow Quill to like give me a witch light, send a witch light after me. All right, so you just kind of get glimmers here and there. Your own shadow is getting in the way. It's getting wider. You have space for your feet. You're shimmying. You keep going. I'm going to be very careful because I'm worried there's going to be like a hole. So like carefully tap next to me to make sure that there's ground. All right. So you're, you're there. And at this point you, you're getting suspicious because it's kind of like wedging outward. So you check your shimmy space. Yeah. And then like another step, you're good, and then another step, and you see that as the wall widens, your shimmy space doesn't, and there's just a drop. Uh. <sighs> you haven't told Crow Quill to stop. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of bunk. <laughs> oh, oh, he's fall. Oh, you're following me. I would have to with the witch light. I can't guide it down specific paths like that. I can't see okay, where I'm Okay, I, I would have told you to I would t absolutely <laughs> tell you to stop. Anything good over there? Um, does it just look like a, like a drop? Like it's a big open area or? Uh, you, it's one of those things where just because of how caves are, no matter how bright, no, how to, no matter how far reaching a light, it just hits an edge and then it twists and an edge and it twists no matter where you're looking no matter what kind of cavern and you just lose the light you can only see so far before you just nothing you know there's a drop and you're kind of go well there's a drop and as you say that there's a weird echo at once it's almost like being right next to a wall like in a tiny little box like muffled speaking to yourself and at once the echo that comes back is like it came from a cathedral there's you that you heard real close in, and then the cave's distortion of you is this distant wail. Okay, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell like Crowquill to back up. Let's go back. We'll, we'll go the other way. This is a dead end. All right, shimmy to the left. Shimmy, shimmy to, to the, the right. left. All right, you start shimmying. Something behind you dislodges. Just a small pebble. Like, the sort of thing that you wouldn't even think about as you're grinding forward. You hear it kind of go off the edge and kind of go... K -k 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 to the point where you can't hear whatever it's bouncing off of just due to the distance. Yeah. Um, I am looking for a place to sort of prop up a torch uh, where it won't set anything on fire, but where I can have both hands free uh, to help these guys get out of that crevice if they need it. It's not too hard. You're... You were only like three people deep and you're being very careful as you're caving. So basically you just kind of squeezed in and then squeezed out. Okay. 
you guys all pack, like get back into the lobby just to get the open space, get cozy again, and then there's the other direction. Okay, other going to the left. All right. Mm. You're able to hold the torch at an angle so that if you're at the front or back of the group, you can hold it away from people. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. So who's at the front? Who's at the back? What's the I'll order go front here? We're again. All right. With Crowquill's witch light. Yep. Um, I guess just one question. So they're on. They're, they went through a door. Now they're shimmying along the wall. Are they along a wall that I could also be a, on on the inside? Have you like, ever been in a really old house, and then when you're doing construction or something, you find the space between the walls? Oh, sure. Yeah. That's the deal. Okay. I'm probably going to hand my staff to Jane and just kind of be like, use this to, you know, poke ahead of you. After all, I can't, it's a little bit too cumbersome in this enclosed space. I'm just going to have to go by hands. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. So, so you hold it out. You have a bit of light, which is enough so you have information as you're tapping. But the tapping with the pole is helpful as you shimmy along. It, you know, like you go, you hit stuff. There's no down this time. And then it starts to get wider with a floor. And it gets to a kind of little, almost like a closet space. You can feel that there's ropes here, but as you're standing there able to grip the ropes, you don't have light, and Croquil is behind you, unable to get the witch light close enough, still stuck shimmying. Okay. I guess I'll get try to get out of the way if I can. Up or back? Um, so you're on that side of the wall. I'm going to walk along on the inside, like tapping as far as I can in the direction they're going. Does my tapping, like, do I reach Jane? You, you do it, and then after a little while, you get sort of like a meter from the edge of the wall, and you hear Jane going, yep. And then you tap further, and you can, f like, feel like it's against rock past that. Mm. Mm. How high up is this room? Like, this is this room like a is maybe grand a, hall? It's like a 12-foot ceiling. Like, stately for a modest place. Okay. As you're there, though, you notice that there's a panel in a wall you didn't notice before. Like, it's made so the wallpaper matches, but there's a little latch you can pull. I'll pull the latch. Looks like there's a box of little switches. You think you've seen this on Dwarven Tech before. It's a fuse box. One of them's blown. Hmm. Mm. I'm nervous about this. I don't want to get don't want to get zapped. Um. So maybe I'm not going to strip this one for parts just yet. Um. That is interesting. I'm going to experimentally flick a switch. Do you give it a clunk? And well, where you are, where you can't see out at, out there, like just up against the rock, there's a big neon sign that illuminates the climb ahead of you. And suddenly you can see in just red. This is just red caverns. You're not even at an angle where you can see, but you know that it says something. It's one word. You reckon based on the ship that it's probably carnival. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crouch down. Can I crouch down? Would I be able to do that? Or do I have like do I have enough room? Yeah. So I'm going to crouch and mm -hmm. have Crow Quill like reach over me over me with the witch light if you can so that I could just see like how far up this goes. All right. If I so can you see the top. You get low, you pass along the instructions and there's enough witch light in addition to the neon light, you can tell that this is maybe a 10-foot climb, and then the opening above seems to be roomy enough. 
I give a tug on the rope. Secure. Okay, I'll climb up. All right. You clamber up, and then the rest of them follow. It's easy enough for Sun to come by after hearing the clunk and go, oh, and see the neon having gotten up there. As you climb up, about midway up the climb, you can see that, sure enough, it's half hidden by the rock, but it says Carnival. And then in little words that you didn't even notice were there until you're here, like fake cursive, it looks like it says Motel, Carnival Motel. Hmm. Hmm. You get a little higher, and you're at, like, a little chamber where there's a wide intersection of tunnels. Is this still, like, you know, wood or metal floor, or is this, like, rock? Uh, when you left the motel doors, it became rock again. Okay. Hmm. There's enough room for all of you, so you clamber up there, and you can all kind of sit there, straighten yourselves up, loosen your backs, and get a look around at the Y intersection. Both of them right. kind of... All right. So you go right, and you move far enough that, like, you can't see where you came from. It goes a little further. I keep going. Oh, oh. man, she's just going for it. Me and Crow Quill, because I need that light. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm coming. <laughs> Yeah, she appears to be very determined. Hmm, well... Uh, the lights work. Which means there's something's power in this place. Alright, so you get to the end. And... This one is another downward climb. And you can see that there's the rope just now, kind of tug to tug, like, awkwardly being tugged. And very distantly, you hear a clinking, and then the rope goes slack. I saw the rope just now get tugged? Mm hmm Hello? Well, I guess that's the approach. Hello! Hello, you okay? Don't act like you wouldn't do the same, son. <laughs> well, I just... I didn't know which approach we were taking. There is a deep, stinging silence. You then hear a scampering getting distant without any words. Great. Oh, well, it's probably some sort of animal. Bro, well, you're great with animals, eh? Well, considering last time I tried to find anything on the island, I didn't find anything. Oh, well, this is onto the item. It's a little, uh, little different, eh? Alright, it? Will, can I sense creatures? <laughs> mm -hmm. Go for it. Alrighty. Doing my druid shit. Sometimes I feel like I was only employed on this ship to do druid shit. Uh, 15. <laughs> Alright, you sense with your feelings. There's obviously the people around you. You've you feel one life form below getting further and at the faintest possible of your extremities you just barely feel the life forms of your crew above the rock is damping the shit out of it does the one that's running away seem um angry does it yeah it's gone by now oh. mm. Well, good work, Crow Quill. Okay. Well. Something's living down here. Hmm. I feel... I don't really want to go down there with that thing. Could, well, I, get here, it, Jane, could I get a sense of size on it when I was able to sort of connect with it? You felt a, an elf born, an adult. Oh, oh a person. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was an animal. Mm. Well, then we should definitely investigate. <laughs> uh, yeah, he might. He might need some help. He might. Uh, he ran away. He didn't. He... Being stuck down in the dark and weird things to a mind. We should be prepared for anything. 
After oh, I'm all, sure there's a... The people that we first saw had killed each other. The last yeah, one was I'm... locked up. The other one died yeah. to a trap. Okay, well, I'll go down first. How, how long? How far down is the is the climb? Ten feet, you reckon? Okay, I'll go down first, and then like what, as soon as I get down there, ready my crossbow. You well, know? I mean, I'm I'm sure there's a peaceful resolution. I say as I load my shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep right. an eye up here. Do you want to give me a delicate? Brawn or Grace roll, uh, just for um, I can't remember your character's name, Jane Doe, because it's deeply forgettable. Fuck. Don't know. So yeah, Jane, uh, give me a roll. You want to get a twenty okay, or take um... damage otherwise. All right. I will take eight damage to pass for eight grace. Damage. All right, you you rappel down as quickly as you can. You scrape against the walls, and your feet kind of. Have you ever hopped from where you're a bit too high, and like you land on your feet, and they kind of go like up your legs. Mm -hmm. Get yeah. that. That being said, you land your like you go with the fall into a nice low crouch to support your crossbow, and you look around, but nothing. Okay. I call the other guys down. You can see the light kind of waver a little bit as Crowquill needs both hands to climb. It's dark for a moment. It's pretty cramped down here. You're not uh, sure... Rear. It's not as narrow as the sort of shimmy you were in before. It's still like... It's, it feels really cramped because it's basically like a vertical coffin, but you can walk straight up just kind of awkwardly. That's okay. about the space you have, and you're going to have to move away from them. Okay. I will move away. Want to give me gonna... long odds? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> I don't right, think odds that was evens. actually a question. <laughs> um, evens. I got an even and an odd. All right, you like catch your foot on something, immediately realize what it is, and kind of lurch back. You clatter against the wall and avoid most of it, but you've triggered a trap of some sort, a tripwire. Nice. Looks like it was a small explosive of some sort. You take. That would be 21 damage. Ooh. Whoa. Piercing from shrapnel, if it makes a difference. All of you, for a brief moment, are deafened by like a small detonation in a cave. There's a ringing, the sudden light. It's probably a minute before you can hear each other, and then another minute before you can understand each other. Was I still Ooh. climbing down the rope when that went off? Yep, you were high enough not to take shrapnel, but... I am clinging to that rope for dear fucking life, because I now have no goddamn sense of what's going on. <laughs> yeah. oh, um... You've got the rope, and you know physically where you're situated in the cave. Yep. Yeah. I'll, as soon as I'll... As soon as I pull myself together, I'll be like, okay, it, it was a trap. Um, there's still ground down here. We're okay. I'm, yeah, I, I'm still kind of at the top there. I can't climb down mm -hmm. with Crowquill on the rope. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll continue climbing down, but what, now that I know that, you know, what it was, because, like, that's the last thing you would want, right, is <laughs> something <laughs> happened below you. <laughs> yeah. I'm blind climbing here. I got nothing. <laughs> so, just to give you the itinerary before you go any further while you're going down here, there's further past the trap into the narrow cave. There's back just a little ways, like not all the way to the hotel entrance, just a little before where there was another passage of the Y intersection. Mm -hmm. And 
ages, ages back where you guys went all the way down to like past the crystal caves and all that, there was one big long cavern like the one you went through before where it was just kind of like you got as far as it was safe to go and kind of went mm, no and stopped. Okay. Yeah, get crippled down here. I just want to see what's ahead of us down this hallway. Like Probably a good idea. Um, <laughs> You get down there, you're definitely going to need at least a minute to not be holding onto a rope as your arms and legs are full of lead. You shake them out and kind of throw a witch light together. You don't see anything further, any trip wires or anything like that, just more cavern. I wonder if there's a way to, like, ritual a light onto an object. <laughs> you mean like a lamp? Sort of like, like make that, yeah, like... <sighs> Like, make Sorry, an object you... glow type of thing. Well, you could yeah, that'd be ritual I... magic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and make Jane's crossbow glow. Ooh, uh, well... Okay. Um, <laughs> what did you say the, what did you say it looked like again? I, I kind of zoned out there. There's... What? Like a... An upright coffin shaped passage that winds and twists forward a little ways okay uh, that's that about as 18. far as you can go forward with an 18 you grab the crossbow and you encant for a moment you might be able to actually enchant this permanently to have an effect but for now you kind of like i'm not gonna make jane's crossbow permanently glow <laughs> You make it so that the sort of like the little hook thing at the front, the thing you put your foot in when you're reloading, kind of like heats a little bit. And then almost like if it was heating up, but it's cold heat, it like grows a brilliant white enough that like you can heat, you can see a little bit of the area in front of where you're pointing the crossbow. Cool. Ooh, I do not want to think about what that's doing to the metalwork. <laughs> okay, how, how do we feel... Do we want to back it? Do we want to continue? This uh, person, there's probably more traps. Before we move forward on that, I will say that as someone who does a lot of tinkering and all that as Sun, you would engineering style have um, like an acronym, TGIM, which is thank God it's magic. As long as it's <laughs> magic, it doesn't, al it doesn't alter the physical structure. So it's the only thing that isn't going to warp the fuck out of the metal. Oof. Thank God for magic. Well, that man might need some help. Yeah, but he also just tried to kill me. Well, well we don't know if he was him that set the trap. I think it's pretty obvious that it's him that set the trap. There's certainly someone setting traps. That's true. Well, I was a little skeptical about this whole cave, but something's powering those lights, and I think it's worth getting. Yeah. Well, do you want to go first? Hmm. Sure. And I'm going forward looking for traps. All Every right. step of the way. Uh, I'm going to pass you my my cane at that point, too, because, again, coffin-like hallway. Got both hands. I can find the walls. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you kindly. Just scout and stick. <laughs> All right. Move forward very carefully. You've got the stick... You're kind of awkwardly like a fencer, a duelist, holding the torch too, so you can see. And after a little while, this opens into a small gallery. It's all awkwardly like slanted at like a 40 degree angle, so you can stand there, but it's not even ground. At sort of mm. the bottom end, there's more ropes going upwards. To the side, there's a downwards, but like walking down passage that's like the coffin, but narrower and tilted a little. Ugh. Ooh. Where do the ropes go? Up. They go up? Yeah. Is there a drop off? Or is it like just the ropes to get up this slope? It's the it's basically like you climbed sorry, you moved forward through the coffin to the gallery. The gallery has like a little sharp 
downwards slope, and at the base of the slope, you start climbing up another rock face. This entire room is like a sharp upwards wedge, so you can see that this goes to an edge that you could clamber onto, but not much more. Hey, uh, Krogel, can I see that pamphlet? Sure. Do, you, do any of the ropes look like they've been touched in the last... Like, are they? Are any of the ropes, like, swinging a little bit? Yep, the the ropes there are just kind of barely... Are they all? It's... Yep. Okay. It's like one set of ropes that kind of goes up this sharp oh, direction. I see, I see. So are we back in whatever this place is, or are we still, like, in rock? You're still in rock. Hmm. Okay. Um, based on the pamphlet, because the boat had carnival written on it, on that mm -hmm. pamphlet, right? Based on that, does that carnival match, like the one we saw, does it match the pamphlet? Yep. What would I have to roll to, like, roughly map out where we are in relation to that based on... Uh, like, I'm trying you don't to need to... You don't need to roll anything. You are not in the boat. It was a motel. Oh! This okay. one hallway was all of the rooms, and the steamer that you were supposed to be in was like a three-level like steamer with like a mm. massive dining area, like a dance hall with a chandelier kind of thing. Okay, I see. It's one of those motels that are like, we're super fancy, like a Titanic motel. <laughs> yeah. How high is the climb for this this next section of ropes? From here, you're guessing maybe a 20-foot climb? Okay, well, we don't want to be going up. We want to be going down deeper in this thing. Wherever this thing's getting power from, it's not going to be up. Right? It's going to be inside the building somewhere. I want to find that person. What are they doing here? <laughs> Do they need help? What I call out again, like, hey... We're here to help. Hello! There's no response. The hair on your arm starts to set on edge. At first you think it's just the apprehension, but no, it actually is getting kind of chilly down here. Mm. Well, I say we start heading back. This guy doesn't want us to follow him. Um, as much as I want to help them, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways we can go, and we're we're just one group looking for one man. He can move a lot faster than us. Okay, because there's there's two ways to go. There's up and down from here, right? And back. Yep. Do you want to go back, all the way back to go to the other direction? Well, where that man was hanging, I bet you down there is where those crystals are. You know, it makes sense. If I was designing this place, I'd put him, you know, down somewhere defensible where the power can easily access. Where you were looking at, like, the dude who was hanging through the hole in the floor, it was almost like there was a wooden floor and floorboards and then a cave right underneath. It was just rock further down that's body was wedged in and then was hanging down from. Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for power, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. By now, you're getting kind of far from the boat. Yeah. Yeah. We should probably, if you want to look for power, we should probably go back and go the other direction in that fork that we saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, might as well. Okay. Let's head back then. All right. You make your way through sort of the coffin shuffle a little ways. Before we do that, I'm just gonna call out again. Be like, "Hey, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna be here. Um, if you need help, like we could bring you somewhere." And then I guess we'll con continue on. Response. Yeah, I wasn't expecting a response. You continue on through the coffin. You make your way to the small, like ten foot upward clamber. From there, you have to all awkwardly shuffle into the kind of like closet and then there's like a shimmy and then you're back at the motel doors 
and you're able to take like the Y a little ways to the doors, and then you're able to Y a little further, and you end up in an intersection. There's like an up, a down, there's two sideways, but it feels really familiar. Intersection. Mm. Intersection. It's all raw, okay? Mm -hmm. Is it one of the intersections that we were in before we got to the motel? Maybe. Oh, it looks well. really familiar, and there's ropes that go like up and down. Okay, okay. Um, I am going to. Is it one of those? One of the intersections of our travels before we even got to, like, got to the the uh, motel in the first place, like literally our first trip down, kind of thing. You wouldn't be able to tell by sight. It's been a little while. The caves are getting a little colder. It's getting colder. Okay. Well, I am going to mock off this exit here, just so we know the one that we came from. Okay. Um, is there any like rocks I could stack up, or you're looking around for sort of rocks? You're starting to make a little cairn, and distantly you hear, "Hey, hey go!" You think someone's calling for you? It sounds like maybe Bilgy. Okay. There's a voice that, in its tones, you know is Rooker, but you can't tell from where. It sounds like. Here in this weird intersection, it's coming from the up. I'll go I was up. Gonna say, Let's can go I sense up. people again? Just do do the life sensey things. Yeah, you sense like the people on the boat and no one else. Okay, also I'll head up and All see right. if I recognize this area. All right, you head up the climb. You're in another area where there's like a small little pocket passage and another upward climb. Upward climb. All right, you do the upward climb. This is starting to feel less familiar, but the voices are getting more clear. You still can't hear what they're saying. You get up here, and now there's like th two, no, three upward climbs that you're able to take. One of them, you hear the voice coming from definitively, but this entire area looks really unfamiliar. Uh, Jane, what you seeing? Once you talk, the voices stop, and then slowly and clearly, Distantly, you hear Rooker going, You three! What, wait, what did he say? You're three? I don't You're know, we're down here. I've got a bad feeling. Crookwell, could you... I can't could you sense give me a anyone. vibe check? I can't sense anyone. As, no, as I mean like, like your um vibe check. your vibe check. Ability. Okay, can I detect magic then? For no, it's it's the uh, dumb dumb. Oh, omen, omen watcher. watcher. Omen, omen watcher. watcher. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, how how do I feel about us pursuing these voices? You feel uneasy, but like you gotta. Uneasy, but gotta. <laughs> Bad vibes I don't. I don't think. I don't think vibes. it's them. I don't think that's them. I think this is like magic doing magic shit. Well, can I sense magic? Uh, give me a roll. Uh, ritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like to roll, detect magic. Uh, that would be. Um, a twenty-two. You don't feel like any magical creatures or any like innate magic or anything like that. You feel like there's a ritual being cast. Right as it kind of clicks, you feel yourself being scried. Because you're active and you're like sensing, 
you're right on your toes, you're able to stop it and you can counter scry. Let's counter, counter scry. scry. <laughs> All right, you push through and you get an image. It's really fucking dark. Like late, late at night. You see a campfire on the edge of the island and Bilgy like looking into a bowl of water. <laughs> it's nighttime, guys. We've been down here for a while. <laughs> hmm. And Bilgy is trying to scry on us. Okay. Hmm. Can I, I like, feel then like counter? Oh, gosh. Can I like counter my counter scry and let him in again? Yeah, at this point, it's not counter your counter scry. It's kind of just you going and just letting your magic go. You feel yourself kind of being scryed. Yeah, I'm in that case. I'm gonna put my witch light to max so that Billie is able to see as much as possible. Whoa! Whoa! You, easy on the you do that, you're pushing the magic really far. And then, just barely, it's really bright, but Jane, you can see a head, like, through one of the upward climbs. In turn, there's another light that's being made brighter. Like, a few seconds later. Hmm. Okay. I call out to it. Hello! You hear a cacophony that sounds familiar of voices overlapping. The caves make it impossible to actually do the communicating just because it's all ping-pongy. You're going to have to get closer, but you recognize them as being your allies. Okay. Oh, uh, Jane, what's going on? Got bad vibes. Got bad vibes. Anyway, I climb up. I climb up to where I see them. All right. You get you climb up a little ways. You hit another area where like here there's two different ups you can get to and then it clicks. And it feels super familiar again. You hear, there you are. And you look and you see Rutger like leaning over one of the things. And you all just kind of do that last climb. Your arms and legs are, it's suddenly hitting you how tired you are. And you get that out there and you see, like it's the night air. You can feel based on the cool that it's not like evening. Like this is night with a capital N. Goodness. It doesn't seem like we were down there that long. No, no, it didn't. Weird. Well, was it worth it? Did you find anything? Uh, Why was there a motel in the middle of the ground? What? There's a motel down there. I'm going to yeah, show them kind the of tech. <laughs> What, like wagoners? No, like... No. At, when you start taking out the tech pieces, like, Ken and you starts looking and he goes... These are, this is, this was made after the apocalypse. This isn't, but only one new gear and the other, the other gears are old. What the shit? Well, it was all smashed up. Uh, could have been someone was trying to fix it, get it working again, maybe. What kind of tool marks do you think those are? Kenny you seems to get really enthralled by this for a moment. Oh, it's hard to tell. It doesn't look forged. Uh, well, it's not worth it. Maybe we'll check in the morning. Well, uh, there is some. There is power down there. There's power down there. Lights there's... are functioning. Uh, big old, big old switch box. And there's someone down there. And there's and somebody down there. Someone's living down there. What, and they like tried a to person? Kill... Yeah, like they tried person. to kill me. Well, we don't know that he tried. Who's the word is? Crucial word is like a person. We don't know. We didn't get a good look at him. He didn't say nothing. Rooker comes closer and goes, wait, wait, wait. Threat to kill you? Are you hurt? Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Are you okay? Um, do they have any doctoring? I might actually be able to take some doctoring. Rooker does. Um, What's your health at? No, I'm not hurt. I'm tired. Okay. I'm in tired, but I don't know so if then, I can take any doctoring in health or tired. You wouldn't? Rooker looks you over and goes... You'll be fine, but Jesus. Yeah. What was that, a mine? No, some mine kind of some sort. It was a tripwire of some sort. I didn't get a good look at it. I was I was up on a rope. Anyway. I need Tiana kind of shrugs and goes, well, maybe they don't want to be saved, in which case, are they surviving down there? What? Until I what saw are they like? Power. 
So it's cool. Said that it was like an elf born. So Tiana like gestures at the ship and goes, "That ship had the notes, and there was," and points towards like the tattered looking clothing and goes, "What if they're like cave people, like sea cave people?" There was even more notes down there when we were investigating. Really? Like, there's another whole room with notes in it. Yeah. Seems like whoever's holed up in there, uh, maybe he's gotten a little stir crazy. Maybe we should uh, get all those notes together, see what they say. Yeah, maybe. Let's. I'm gonna go eat something and then go to sleep and then we'll check out in the morning. Yeah, Crowquill has been petting Warbles this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> All of you kind of groggily head to bed. You sleep really soundly. You've spent the entire day caving, so you fall into bed, and it's almost like there's 30 pounds that added themselves to you when you hit it. <laughs> You're out, and you wake up later than usual, like the early morning still, but not dawn dawn. Okay. All of you, for some reason, once you leave the deck of the ship and look... You hear the kind of faint singing. The wind isn't super strong, so it isn't making this thing howl like it has been before. But you see this waxy outcrop with two ships with no supplies on them and a couple bodies on shore, and it just... Well, how does it hit? Does it hit different? How do you feel looking at this site? I'm so confused about the motel in the ground. Why the hell is there a hotel? In the ground! I'm confused as to what caused these caves. Like, we haven't seen any mining equipment so far. Yeah, it's like, it's like a, like a, ho like a motel teleported into, like, a cave system. And Croco well, has no, no, no bearing on the, on the sights that they are beholding. <laughs> this is all just have... rather really eerie for, for Croco. We have an hour of IRL time, and you have a day of in-game time to spare. I want... I, if Kanye will, I would like to take him down to, like, the motel, or, like, the fuse section. Ooh. He cackles. He's like, ah, fuck no, I don't have legs. Are you kidding? I'm not going in a fucking cave. That's true. I was almost worried you were going to suggest it. I might be a uh, fool enough to try. Yeah, but I don't know. It's where is the power coming from? Uh, well, well, like well, hold on. Let's and at this point, you guys are like above deck where there's the good light. Let's draw a plan. What was the motel sort of shaped like? I give them the best description that I can. I can give. Right, it's got a hallway, uh, rooms on either side, and then that hallway uh, curtains out into a big main area with sort of a desk. Behind the desk, there is a nice room filled with chicken scratch and scrawl. Uh, and then there's a closet, and then the doors lead out back into the cave. And I there don't was, think there's much. There was power in the fuse box. Was there a yeah. generator? Not that I can see. Yeah. Um, were there no, wires it's... going up and down in the cave? Not no, not in the cave. Saw. I was thinking, I was planning if we go down there again to, uh, you know, bring some, uh, bring some tools and start chipping away at the wall there to see if we can follow the wires. Maybe. Depends on who you want to bring for a building tear down at the bottom of a cave in the middle of the ocean. Right. This is probably why the Redcoat Mining Company sent like a whole mine company in uh none of them made it and, out though yeah if you'll recall none of them made it out well one of them could still be down there yeah bill g looks kind of suspicious and he goes whoa wait a moment did you did you find any signs of actual mining work no cores no. or samples or picks or sledges no, no. like i said there's no my, there's no drilling equipment in there it's almost as if they're just doing what we did but yeah they were just and surveying there, and there's none of, well even if they were surveying they'd have equipment there's and if it wasn't on the boat maybe they finished hauling it down hmm, that could be but but he didn't see anything there's ropes like ropes are set up yeah, I mean, yeah, we're just set up. We've got a couple crates that have finished off. 
There is that one. There is one tunnel down further that we decided not to go down. It could because the dude was down that way. He tried as, to you guys, me. as you guys are describing me. the cave section more and more, you're going back and forth, back and forth, and you mentioned the three ways up before the two ways up before getting to the end. Yeah. And that third way up didn't exist before. Or if it did, you didn't see it. Hmm. Now, so why would somebody be making two ways a second forward. entrance? Um, you didn't. Okay. You all went the same way, so you would all remember going through it. It didn't seem chipped. It didn't seem made. It seemed like genuinely just the right angle, the right time, with the right light, and you saw another upward passage. Okay. Well, one, I'd like to go down and get those notes, because um, I left them there that time, because we were exploring still. Maybe Sun could look at more at the fuse, and then maybe take that third upwards section. But I don't really want to go where that dude is living, because there's probably more traps. Hmm. Well, there were traps in the lobby, but Redcoat guy got finished off. It sounds like first people came, set up, went a little stir crazy in the mine, and then the Redcoat surveyors came and just stumbled into all the traps. So, I guess the question is is that guy a surviving member of the Redcoats? Is he one of the originals? Or is he sort of some sort of third cave dwelling party? I don't know. It's honestly, I don't think it matters too much. Well, I'll hide in with you this time. Bilgy kind of shrugs. There's danger. Best have four. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's All go right. down. Um, I think first and foremost, I'd like to go down to the motel. I want to see if that light is still on. Which way? The, to the motel? Mm hmm Boy, we went in the first time. There yeah, was... the way that we went the first time. On the way out, you discovered another way to the motel. Oh, right. That is true. Uh, the way we went the first time, where we went in. First yeah, time. the way we went in. That one doesn't involve any shimmying or... Yeah. Just big climbing. All right. Just like before, just like you've always been doing in cave, you've got a standard rank and file of Jane at the front. Oh, and we're bringing in some extra rope. You've got a bunch of the extra stuff, another solid like 100 meters and a few separate coils that you can hitch together if you need to. And you're, with this extra gear, you're climbing your way up, you go down that first one and then up the other way, so there's that kind of like fence hop. And at the front of the group, Jane, do you want to make me a delicate roll? Sure. Oh, oh shit. That was a... 11. All right. You heave your way over, and then immediately, as you're going down, you you notice that the next piton is wiggling. You get a, you give it a few test kicks, and it's no longer stable enough to hold weight. Hmm. What's well, a hold up, Jane? I explain the situation. Well, we can just go the other way. Okay. Well, I guess we don't have any pitons with us. Hmm. Well... Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's go the other way. You heave your way yourself back over and down. You take another downwards passage, and then you're the area where there was the two ups, one of which you just came from, and the down again. Mm -hmm. But now you only see two. You saw three on the way up, you only see two now that you're here. Well, we gotta search for that third, because the third yeah, is okay, okay. we gotta go. Something just ain't right here. I searched for the third. Is there any like? Is there any way that maybe maybe the rope was taken down? You 
if you look around, you're following the walls, you don't find anything. You're almost at sort of the downward passage when you notice there's just the tiniest bit of ledge that curves around. From there, you take like two steps down, climbing the downwards passage, and you can see that when you climb a different way, there's a separate one, like perpendicular to a wall, and you can get to that third upwards passage. Hmm. Well, I guess it's just not the cal illusion. Okay, I'll go through there. Third upwards passage. I changed you, my mind. <laughs> so you've made your right down, and you go back up the other side, and you can actually, you guys can hear the muffled, like the way that thick rock dampens really, really heavily. You can hear movement from your other companion going up to the third way. All of you follow and hook your way around. Uh, Croquil, as you're making your way through, you're aware that you're less than like six inches, maybe a foot at any given time from the inside of the other main gallery. The other main gallery? Which one was the... Uh... Like the... You know how this whole thing has been like, there's two upwards passages, yeah. but really there's three, but there's two. There's mm -hmm. kind of like a room that has the two. And then this is just like a between the walls situation right along the outside of that. And then you climb up the third. Okay. okay. Where does the third go? What do we see? So you get up here and it's like the way down to the, like down to the ship, except this time, instead of going up and over a fence, the ropes continue and there's like a flat plane, maybe like two feet high, but like there's juts that go down to one. It's like a 50 degree slide downwards and you're kind of just rappelling on your stomach for the ropes to go further. Uh, is it made of rock? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, is there any, any anything else here? Um, you said it's so it's a 50 degree angle and we're like going up this 50 degree angle. So you climbed basically a vertical climb, went over the edge and then you can't see how far it goes, but there's a long like slide with a rope to hold your way down. And it's like, like you're sliding down like that kind of thing. Does this look like my, using my spatial awareness? Like mm -hmm. this could be the rope that goes down to the area, um, to the area that we saw the dude like a while ago. The hanging dude. The, no, not the hanging dude. The, no, there, the there, there was a section dude. where the trap guy. Yeah. yeah. yeah Possibly. There, there was a section that we went to where it was just kind of like we were in the middle. There was a way down. There was a way up, and then we had to we went back. And so you're thinking that. It's the top part of that? Yeah. Could be. I'm, Could well, maybe. We'll know when we climb down. Okay, I'll climb down. I, w I just want to see if, like, once I get to the end of this area, is the next area that area? All right. You go down and down and down and down to the point where like you pause and it's almost like a leg in itself where you kind of have to sit there and go, am I going to keep doing this? Yeah, I'll keep doing it. Keep going. You slide further, further, and you're like, holy fucking shit until eventually you hit a low area. You have to awkwardly like spin and twist into a squat and then shuffle on your feet like Mario under a block, and then you can enter into a space. You don't have time to go for your weapon, but you have enough time to think about going for your weapon and then decide against it. You steady yourself as the rest of your companions follow, the four of you, and there's four of these like cavern people. One of them is the Elfborn. They're all holding their hands up, like demonstrating they don't have weapons. Oh, hey. Oh. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. As long as uh, things are tense, they put their hands, or, like, no longer too tense, they'll put their hands down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing here? Are, how, are listen. You... Just listen. Don't be like us. Going down in these caves, it's 
foolish business. You should do something else with your lives. You could come back with us if you need a way out. Yeah, if you want to leave, I mean, we got a boat, we got supplies. How long have you been down here? <laughs> Too long. No, that's your future, not ours. Go on ahead. Look, I don't want to be rude, but just if you don't want to be down here, just just come on with us. Like, how did the motel get here? Do you know anything about that? It's best not to chase those questions too far. We're here now, it's, but you can go. Hey. Is there anything right. you want to leave? Any clues you found? Uh, they look at you, and suddenly you start to feel tense again. They're eyeing you up. Clues. Oh yeah, I got a key. You want a key? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there you go. You reach out, and it's like snatched from your hand. What else do you have? <laughs> um, do we have that tablet? Do you have the tablet? I'm not. I have the tablet. I'm not saying anything about it <laughs> okay there's like it's one of those situations where there's a pause but before the pause has a chance to be a pause it's cut off and like way too loud one of them goes what the fuck do you have oh whoa whoa calm down calm down i don't have anything else on me uh i don't like liars yeah, that's nothing. Fair. I want to see. I'm trying to think. I. I mean, we when got. You came it. We into got this it. cave. Did you take anything? Um, well, that's true. I mean, we, we took some. There's uh, some uh, some weird coins and register. Uh, okay, what do you have? Come on. Couple games. Well, it's I don't like, have it. With like going to like, come on. No, here, Where come on. It? Come on up. You have to. You have to come on. I have to go up and get it and come back down. Like it's a whole thing. Just come on up. I can give them back if you want. They kind of like all shirk. The one that's been talking. It's only one person talking. The rest of them have just been quiet. Just goes. We don't want. To. Just go. Okay. Mm, all righty. We'll go. You want any like food or supplies or? No. And don't come back. Okay. Rope, rope Sandy. Well, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna start leaving. <laughs> They watch you go. There's a oh, long like climb nice up that 50 degree incline. Now that you're climbing, you're kind of on your hands and knees avoiding this. And you're scraping and scraping. And you look down and you see two eyes just at the base watching you climb away. Scraping. You're over the heave. You're down. You go through the walls. When when we get to the top of the rope, I'm putting a blast rune on the top of the rope. What? Why? I don't want so, them following us. It oh, takes hang on now. it takes a minute to cast one of these. So you you go down, you put your nails into the rock, and there's almost a fizzling as they dig in, and you start casting the rune, and then you feel the rope starting to twitch and go stiff as one of them very slowly starts to follow up. I told you so. <laughs> oh, come on now, Croquil. We offered to take him out. How, how long, like... How long until I finish this rune? Like, you'll finish it, and then you better book it so it doesn't go off in your face. Hmm. I, I'm going to start leaving, like, as you're finishing this rune. Yeah. I'm going to say go on without me and then and then finish up this rune. And then I am asking Sun to stay behind to sort of guide me. Oh, yeah, I wasn't leaving. I yeah. was, uh, I'm sitting there like, hey, what, you're winning, Sun? Uh, what, you, what you doing there, Gokul? I'm, I'm just going to be like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. We need a little, need a little help up, there. Shut up. Uh, shut up. <laughs> there's a foothold right here. So, you, kind of, you just you not? <laughs> fucking, you shove, and then you, you, you finish, and you activate 
the the glyph, you feel it set, and Let's you go. feel whoever's climbing stop. You don't have a sense of distance, but way too close. You hear, proud of you. And they start climbing back down. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you, you too, stranger. I'm getting out of here. Jesus <laughs> Christ. So you move through the narrow bit. You do that bit where you have to start climbing and then climb up the normal way. You go the right of the the correct one of the two passages up and then another two passages and you're back at the boat. It's around noon. Goodness. Okay. Um, you know, let's, let's just go. I think. Yeah, those folks were uh, maybe a little intense. Yeah. Maybe a little. Alright, so it's noon and you're out on the sea. You guys just got out and went, yeah, we're going, and you just left. Mm -hmm. So that awkward energy is just sitting as the boat sails away. Let's sit with it and get to Newtown. Want to pull up the map? Nice. By the way, I think that means that we kept... Oh, crap, I forgot to fix this. Well, that was oh. going... You kept the... I, we kept the tablet and the boat in a bottle. And my pamphlet. Mm -hmm. And your pamphlet. Yeah, so we have we have those and the coins. three and the coins. Um, so I think we're down a square. Yeah. There we go. The wind is moving more or less like it's not in your favor. It's just it works well for you. It's moving easterly, sort of perpendicular to where you're sailing. Okay. You make some decent progress northward, uh, like two squares worth. From here, now that you're getting closer to the early afternoon, you have to chart more of like a northwest to try and get closer to Newtown. The wind is really working with you here. It's moving right along the same direction as you are. Nice. Remember last time I said that it never goes in our direction? <laughs> yeah. Um, it wants us to get the fuck away from wherever the fuck that was. Yeah. At full sail, it gets you basically to the edge of this quadrant, and then the late afternoon would very easily have you flow in there and start to get to port right around dinner time in Newtown. This is a place that... You, as characters, have been here before. You, as players in a different campaign, have been here before. But we haven't been here before in this section. So, for the sake of description, uh, there's these big hills that kind of circle around the bay, like slate hills, and there's mud between them. People farm in the mud. It's really rich soil. Uh, and this place, Newtown, is all sort of like, it's all built, been built in the past 60 years, like slate roofs, wood timber buildings. But even for you, as new travelers like people who have like come and gone through Newtown a few times this is new there's three of them and somehow they must have been built in the last month big column things they're not working right now but it's some sort of big rope mechanism hmm. you peel into port and throw your ropes, they come in for the inspection, you show them the port pass, they grumble and head off. Cool. That's going to be the session. If you want to see more of our adventures, that's going to be at youtube.com slash mrcroden when we post them. If you want to check them out live, that's going to be here at twitch.tv slash mrcroden. And if you, want to play the, if you want to play this game based on the most recent like full rule set that's available, I just cracked like six months of writer's block, so I'm actually writing a rules book again. Nice. What do you know? Very good. Uh, so there is progress on that, but bloodwine.fandom.com is the most lace. It's the latest singular cohesive version of the rule set if you want to play this game at home. And what's coming up? Well, I want the world to know. Uh, I'm coming up. Uh, no, starting tomorrow, I'm going to be playing through. Um, Halo series with my buddy. Oh! <laughs> um, uh, so we have the Master Chief collection, and he is a massive Halo fan. 
I am a not. I wouldn't call myself the biggest fan, but I'm a moderate. I'm a mild fan, a little little teen type fan. Um, you, you guys know that video of like. You guys know that video of like twenty dudes in a public bathroom at a con, like singing the Halo theme? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if they did that during the coronavirus. <laughs> oh man! People would just That's... tell them to shut up, get out of there, and socially distance. You wouldn't make it out of the room. You'd all start hacking and coughing and just pile on the way out the door. Like... Well, also, also, best case scenario, they're still all wearing their masks, so it just kind of goes. <laughs> like it just doesn't sound as good. <laughs> oh. It's like a kazoo effect with the vibration of the mask fabric. <laughs> oh god. Man. That's... Could you guys even remember pre-coronavirus times? It seems like six like months a ago. Different lifetime. It was a different lifetime. We would go to Ken's house and lay on his floor. Yeah. It was a good floor for stretching out your back. It was. It still is a good floor for stretching on your back, and you know what? It's prime. It's ready for people to come and stretch out their back again. <laughs> but alas, the virus ain't. Yeah. The last. The Rona. The Rona says Nona. <laughs> we're back to like April numbers. Yeah. Yep. Like we're peaking. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. I you know, uh, everyone kind of made fun of the U.S. For turning mm -hmm. their curve into a half pipe way back when, and then yeah. we just went and did it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm and they're they're upset. blaming the students, like the university students coming back to school, and it's like it's not the university students. They say below forty, so they don't have to say that it's children and their parents. It's like this is not because the universities opened; it's because the like regular classrooms did. It's because yeah. all no. schools opened. <sighs> Yeah, like I, th I definitely think the university is. It definitely is part of it, a but little like, bit. Yeah, like you can't tell not... me that first year university students finally experiencing freedom from their parents aren't having it a little bit. Because I was a first year university student not long ago, and I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's a. But yeah. it's somebody's job to analyze these numbers, and like, man, it's going to be a fun case study. X number of years from now, there's going to be so many, so many PhDs coming out of COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I guess is a good thing. Yeah, we needed fresh PhD topics <laughs> and fresh banks of quality content uploaded and invariably timestamped with Rona. <laughs> At the Rona it's times. Rona. It's going to be weird when like the coronavirus is over and like a year's passed and like a YouTube video will come up on autoplay. And it's just, you'll know. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be signs like, huh, where's the rest of the crew? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, this is all made with like impromptu Discord setup. That's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm excited for like this show specifically because like the border was meant to be redone for like when we went to a three camera setup and then the Rona hit yeah. and now we're in three different households. So like genuinely just, we're going to walk back into Ken's place when this is all over and just have a bunch of equipment that we're going to turn on and then go, and now it's the glow up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now this was the whole purpose for all of this. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to be playing Halo tomorrow with my buddy because it's my yeah. three year anniversary of streaming this month and he was the oh. first person I streamed with on my very first stream, so we're kind of making a thing of it. Yeah. So it's a three year anniversary stream. Three years. Yeah. I've been doing this for three years. <laughs> wow. Well, congratulations. And I've so good. I've I've really made it. I'm so famous. <laughs> so yep. famous. Yeah. Praise the algorithm. Praise, Praise the, the algorithm. algorithm. Anyway, other than that, we still got New Vegas this weekend. Doing yeah, the we got New Vegas. Old World Blues, was it? Was, that was the name of the DLC? Yeah. We got a dog. If you thought it was bad game. listening. <laughs> yeah, if you thought it was bad listening to Ulysses going his monologues, now we have like six robot scientists fighting over each other trying to be funnier. Oh. I'm oh, going to that's love that. There, there's going the one... to be like oh. a section that I'm going to enjoy like five seconds of it and then immediately be angry again. <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't the one where the in, like the first thing is you're basically stuck in a dialogue thing for like a full half hour. 
Uh, yeah, one? and your your brain gets scooped out. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So tune in for that. That's going to be fun. <laughs> So yeah, if you want to have your brain scooped out, uh, tune in on Saturday for some of that. Uh, I love having my brain scooped out. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, this has been a long yeah. pro stamble. It's time yep. to close this, probably. Yep. Do it! See you guys Peace. next time. Thank you all very much for watching. Bye-bye.